this video, we are going to map some data. Now, before I start any mapping project, I like to ask myself some key questions. What's the story? Am I trying to answer a question? Or am I just trying to show my audience member where are places or show them any spatial correlation on my map? Now, is there a call to action after creating the map, after they see the map? Now, I'm sure these are all questions you ask yourself when you create any story or when you investigate in any story, not just creating a map. But like a story, a map is a visual aspect of storytelling. So for this demonstration, I am going to take a look at an ongoing issue, and it's on affordability. Now, the question is, is there enough community housing in Toronto? And is it properly situated within Toronto? Now is a good time to sign into your ArcGIS Online account if you haven't done so, and follow through the steps I take in the next couple of videos. Pausing the video and work through the different step in creating the map we'll be making together. Now take notes of any questions you might have and we can discuss it later on. From our question, we know that our study area is the city of Toronto. Now there are a lot of open data sites for a city, municipality, and even provincial government. What we're going to do is go to the City of Toronto open data site, go down to open data portal, and that would bring us to a page where we can search for a data set in the open data portal. We are going to search for boundaries and that results in 36 data set for boundaries. Now, because there's so many different boundaries, we need to find out which one we want. And that really depends on what level of detail of data set you want to be um, illustrating. So what we're interested in is understanding the neighborhoods. So understanding at the neighborhood level how community houses are distributed and whether there are enough. Clicking on that page, it brings us to a preview of the neighborhood map. What we're interested in is downloading the data set. So let's go ahead and download. Select the file format, a, a shape file, and that is essentially a geospatial file format that has a spatial component associated to the data set. As for projection of the map, we leave it as it is because ArcGIS Online defaults a map projection for us. We are going to download the data onto our local computer. So I already have that download. Let me replace that. And with that downloaded, we can go back into our ArcGIS Online. Going into content, we're going to bring in that zip file, that zip neighborhood file by clicking on add item from my computer and choose that same zip file, indicate that it is a shapefile, so it defaults and recognize that it's a shapefile. Make sure we publish this to a hosted layer and give it a title. So I'm gonna call it Toronto Neighborhoods and give it an initial, so my initials here, and do that for yours as well. We are gonna give it a tag, so usually you put tags to help search for this file later on um, or help people search for your file or your data set. So I'm going to put Toronto neighborhoods and this was for a demo so I am going to put demo as well. Let's add the item. Once this item is uploaded it will bring us to the items page. So on the item page here, we can take a look at our data set visually on a map. So each of these polygons represents a neighborhood within the city of Toronto. And if we go into our data tab, this will show us the tabular format of our data set. So each row here represents a polygon on the map we saw earlier. Now going back to the overview page here, it is always good practice to give our data set a description. So I'm going to put City of Toronto Neighborhood Boundary, hit save. And for the terms of use, we can add any terms of use based on the City of Toronto Open Data License page. So I'm going to copy this URL, go back here into our overview page and put in Open data license and hyperlink that so people know what the terms of use is through going into the city of Toronto link. 
I'm going to hit save. So that concludes kind of a very brief adding additional metadata to our data set. Let's start a map document. So to do that, we are going to click this blue button here and click on the drop down blue menu here to go into map viewer. So open in map viewer. This will take me to the map viewer interface. I'm going to hit OK. And we get to see the neighborhood boundaries that we uploaded on our map. Giving you a quick introduction of the map viewer interface, we have here on the left hand side the black menu bar that has all the tool set to configure a map document. Each of these icons here will change the panel right here to do any map um, configurations. Let's go back to layers. On the right hand side here, we have a lighter toolbar here with tool sets that relates to the data itself. So configuring how the data looks, what their pop up format is, that's all on the right hand side. And clicking on one of these will change the panel on the right. Now we can collapse these icon tools uh, on, on the left and right hand side here, but I'm going to turn it on because we are just getting used to it. But once you're used to the whole map viewer interface, these icons are just really muscle memory to click on. Now on this map, we've added this data set and this is what we call layers. Now the reason why they're called layer is because when you add more data set, you're layering data on top of another data. So the idea of layers comes from overhead projector back in the days where content on transparent paper are stacked on top of each other. So this is great. We brought in the data set onto our map. Let's save this map document. So click on here, the save button. And notice when I haven't saved it, there's a blue dot kind of notifying you. You haven't saved any of your changes. We're going to click on save. And that's going to pop up a window where you can give your map document a name. So I'm going to call it um, Affordability Map of Toronto. Give it my initials. And notice that if you put in weird characters on your title, ArcGIS Online is not going to accept that. I'm going to give it a tag. So Toronto housing neighborhoods. Give the map a summary. So this map looks at the community housing in the city of Toronto. Save it in a folder. So I'm going to save it in the folder share. And I'm going to hit save map. So now that our map is saved, you can see that the title has changed here. And before we conclude this video, let's explore the layer we brought in. Let's click on the neighborhood layer, select that, and you'll know it's selected because of the blue bar here. And go to the three dots and click on show table. So that will bring us a preview of the tabular format of the data set like what we saw earlier. I'm going to hit cancel for this here so we can have more real estate to see the table. And we'll notice that each column name is named field underscore one, field underscore two, three, which makes no sense whatsoever. Now to find the meaning behind these column names, we have to go back to the open data site to read the metadata. So let's do that. And in here, Click on data features and you'll see all the column names listed out on the left here. Now keep in mind, not all open data site have random field names, but it's always good to practice to check the quality of your data and make adjustment where it's needed. So what I'm going to do is rename the field on my map. So going back into my tab where I have my map, I'm going to go into configure fields. And fields is just another word for columns. So if you hear me say field names, I just mean column names. So let's go ahead and select field underscore one and change the name based on the Toronto metadata site name. So let me go here 
and correspond the first row with field underscore one and then so on. Now let's say I wasn't sure, we can take a look at the preview of the data set from the map provided. So if I click on a polygon, it tells me underscore ID. So underscore ID starts with a one one. So if I go back to my map here and take a look, field underscore one starts also starts with one one. So let's change field underscore one to underscore ID as the metadata have indicated. So hit done and do that for the rest of the field names here. But keep in mind that these fields are organized based on the alphabetical order. So the field underscore one, and then it goes to field underscore 10 and not two. So keep that in mind, maybe have that metadata listed out and numbered. That way you can be efficiently renaming your field names. This will become very important. So rename all your fields so that when we move forward, we have all the useful names. Once you're done that, make sure you save your map so that all the field name changes will retain within your map document. And just a fun fact, when you save a map, so let me just close this out. When you save a map and the map extent you're in, that would be the extent your map will show up when you bring it back in. So if I saved it in this view and I hit refresh, just a little refresh here, my map will open up in the same spot. So that's something to keep in mind when you are trying to show a particular map and your audience member, you want your audience member to see what you want them to see. So make sure when you save it, you position your map extend here properly so that they can see it. Now that we know how to bring in data, we can proceed to the next video where we'll learn to add more information to this neighborhood layer. Until then, happy mapping.